Well, hello, everyone. Good Friday to everybody. And on this Good Friday, I thought I would share a Frank Frazetta book that not many people have. So I want to do a flip through of it. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's let me just adjust the camera a little bit here. Give me one sec. This is always tricky. So this is the Frank Frazetta Alexander Gallery uh, book from a show where Frank's stuff was on display. And it'll it'll show here. So Frank Frazetta, a retrospective, Alexander Gallery, New York. It was on display, as you can see, from November 1st to December 10th, 1994. I was working for Acclaim Comics at the time, Valiant by another name, uh, working on Exo Man of War, and a bunch of the creators were in New York, and Steve Masarski, the president of the company at the time, took us all to the gallery for a private viewing, so it was just a bunch of us comic guys in there. Uh, I know Bart Sears was there. I'm pretty sure Ron Mars was there, the three of us, and uh, Bernard Chang, people working on the birthquake stuff for Acclaim Valiant, Valiant at the time. And uh, we were all given one of these books. So, you know, it has a preface that tells you about it. A little biography on Frank. And I think this book goes, look at this early work by Frank. See, we all start somewhere. And uh, I was looking on eBay just out of curiosity. And I think this book goes for around two, two fifty on eBay right now. So this is all stuff that was in the gallery. Model sheets. In the late 1940s, Frazetta compiled a portfolio of his accumulated model sheets and commission drawings. He then brought these works to various publishers in an attempt to find himself work. These are just gorgeous drawings. Of course, it's Frank. What do you expect? This is just fantastic uh, ink work. These originals were just so gorgeous to see. I love these two. I especially love this one on the right-hand side. Just the lighting on her figure and the way he did the wrinkles in her, uh, her dress. And I love the fade he gave her leg, her back leg in shadow. And then the way he did the water reflections and the light rays coming through, just mm, superb. Some great Ghost Rider covers here. Tim Holt, Western Adventures. And this inking is so nice. Look at this. This is brushwork. This is just gorgeous brushwork right here on this barrel. And these barrels, I love the composition. Nice strong black here, curves everything around. The guns, of course, point at the center of focus. Ghost Rider.
And we're not talking about the guy that drives a flaming motorcycle or in this day and age, a flaming Dodge Charger. We're talking about the ghost rider that rode a horse. This dry brush on this smoke is just phenomenal. This is always one of my favorites right here. It's the brushwork on his torso and legs. This is probably one of my least favorites. And yeah, it's Frank Fazetta and anybody can be criticized. Don't sue me. But I just, I never liked this cover. Part of it is this guy's head looks way too big. And because it's in that, that old school fishbowl of a helmet, I almost get the feeling that it's like larger because of the way it's perceived through the fishbowl. But I don't think that's the case. But then back here, you just look at the inking on this, her dress, and it's just so gorgeous and lush everything Frazetta did was just very lush this is one of my favorites the underwater with the octopus and that dude swimming right there hmm just great stuff. I love this reflected light coming in here. The whole composition of everything. Even down to detail, even down to the toes. Dude's toes are curling like, oh, I just got just trying to get this dude and oh, my toes are curling. Doodle books one and two from 1953 to 1959. I couldn't even afford these sketches if I wanted to. If I could even find them, I wouldn't be able to afford them. It's gropey guy. Look at him getting himself a handful. Good Lord. Fantastic horses, and these are pen sketches. You can tell they're inked with a pen, some type of dip pen. Not quite sure what he used. And these gesture drawings of these women, and just these blocking out of figures look so nice. Love this. This is so cool. Just the gesture of that pose. Some cartoony stuff. Just great pen and ink stuff. And don't worry, there are paintings in here. Just I love this. All cross hatching. No solid black in anything. It's all done just with cross hatching. And this female figure here is just fantastic. The line work he did and stuff. Same with her. I mean, they're all nice, but I really love that one. This dude lost his head. No, oh, poor guy. Lost his little head. These sketches are just so full of life. This one is fantastic.
the gesture, the posture, the the pen work is so free and just loose. Look at this guy. Go through this a little bit quicker. This is just gorgeous, so subtle. The pose, super cute face. The pose is just so subtle. The pen work, this is gorgeous too, just with the amount of pen work he did on her and the lighting. Look at this creepo. He's like, whoa, 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 what do we have here? <laughs> crazy there's prices in the back of this book too for stuff and this you know this is 27 years ago so the prices back you know back then i thought were like wow that i can never afford well 27 years later all those prices have gone up got some t-rex dinosaurs Great gesture drawings. Oh, these little cartoony things are just so good. I mean, the guy could do anything. Cartoony stuff, his realistic stuff. I mean, these are just great. I love this tonal cover rough just to get his his tones down his gray grayscale if it works in black and white it'll work in color oh i gotta turn the book just for that one wow That is just great. So nice. He makes the, shall we say, larger chicks look so fine. So fine. Ink paintings. Mm. This was always one of my favorites. I just love the expression on the lion's face. So full of energy and life. It's just a, it's a gorgeous ink piece. Oh, I got to sneeze. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Man, I'm glad I'm the only one in my office right now because that, that was just all over the place gross. A few more high contrast ink pieces. Let's see, I'm trying to find something. Doing two things at once here. One. One second. Uh, ben ask if you can track down this book anywhere yeah go to ebay check ebay it's a couple hundred bucks 
so what you can really tell, so Mike Mignola is a big Frazetta fan. And I think you can definitely see it in these two pieces, and especially this one, with the way Frazetta's doing his lighting and spotting the black areas and stuff. These are fantastic. Just such nice, nice pieces of work. So yeah, I would I would definitely check eBay. You're just going to end up paying a, a pretty penny. I've always loved this piece. Always loved the inking he did on her back and her butt. And it looks like it's all brush. It's just so soft and fine, and the way he does the hair blowing in the wind. And this dude's like, that way, we must go that way. Little Abner. I tell you, I've got the couple books. Actually, I think there's three, maybe four books called the Little Abner Frank Frazetta Years. And I've only got a couple. I, actually, I think I only have one of them. And, you know, it's it's gorgeous stuff, but at the same time, um, you know, he was doing it in Al Cap style. You could see a little Frazetta bleed through, but, you know, for the most part, you know, that's just so Al Cap looking, but I just, I still just love it. Colored pencil and watercolor. Look at this, three and three quarter by five and a half inches. That is not that big at all. Just look how gorgeous it is. How big was this one in fact? Let's see. This was three and three quarters by five and a half inches. Man, that is crazy the detail he got in these things. So nice. Now we get to the preliminaries. Tarzan the Invincible watercolor 15, 10 by 15. So basically that's comic page size, the original. Man, that is nice. I mean, that's a prelim. These are just so good. I haven't, you know, the funny thing is I haven't looked through this book in a long time. I mean, I recognize all these finished paintings. And it's just crazy to see the size that these originals were. Five and a quarter by four and a quarter. Eight by six. These are gouache. that painting that's a famous painting and this rough is four and a half by three and a quarter just wow just wow excuse me I just have to Move something real quick. Uh, got a comment. Got my first man today. I'm eagerly flipping through it and saw you were live. Wanted you to know I'm excited. Well, thank you very much. I pre uh, I appreciate that. Getting all tongue tied here. I just got back from an early dinner with the family. Had some pizza. Love me some pizza. Eric McIntyre, hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining in. Looking at a little classic Frazetta. 
that is just gorgeous. That looks like a finished painting, but this these are his roughs. The oil paintings. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Mm. Dracula. I'm Dracula. 13 by 10 inches. Nice. Man, the motion of this horse and just the nice curve of this. It's got a nice triangle feel. Shoop, 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 shoop. So nice. 24 by 18. Hey, Eric, you need to check the mail. I think you do, because I think I got a notification from stamps.com saying it was delivered. So uh, I hope I'm right. And I didn't just get your hopes up. And the colors that Frazetta would use and the way he would work that paint. Mm. It's another favorite of mine, but I'm a huge Tarzan fan. So, of course, all the Tarzan stuff I love. Black Panther, 16 by 12. So nice. I love the way he does these backgrounds. They just look like it's blurred like in real life when you look at the stuff. Jongar fights back. You fight back, Jongar. Eric says, Frazetta is awesome. Yes, he is. This is always, this is one of my favorites too. Just love the lighting and just the different colors in here. Oranges, yellows, greens. <clears throat> A little bit of the face popping out of the shadow. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, this is one Masonite. I love this. Nineteen sixty six, before I was born. I'm so glad I have this book because I saw all this stuff in person. And it's just this faint memory now. So it's great that I can uh, look back. Oh, this is one of my favorites when I was a kid. With the mammoth. I just love this composition with the mammoth tusks. Him coming right up the middle. If it was me in this picture, you'd see my face and my torso running at you, running away. Not going after it. Young world. Going after a sea monster. Tree of death. I just love the way I do vividly remember the looking at his uh, painting technique and just the way he almost just slopped on the paint. You could, you get, you know, from a distance and reprinted small, you can't tell, but when you see these originals, you can see the brush strokes, just gorgeous. A 
North Free says, you're lucky, Andy. That's a great looking book. Nobody's better primal art than Frazetta. That is true. You can get this book if, you, uh, if you're just joining. You can go to eBay. It's just going to cost you a few hundred bucks. So you can get it. Unfortunately, you're just going to have to pay for it. I don't even know what it costs because, like I said, this was given to us all as gifts. So took the spider down. Eight by 16 inches. That's crazy. This thing's only eight inches tall and then 16 inches, 16 that way, eight that way. Another fantastic piece, 16 by 20. Man, that's nice. The Moon Maid. Who the heck is calling me now when I'm live streaming? rude so rude don't these people know man 16 by 20 oh yeah this was a great one I remember seeing this as a kid Charging Huns. You know, you hear that. And you, your mind just imagines hundreds of them. And he just, what about, ahoy, Andy. Well, ahoy to you. What about, thanks for joining. And then you see the actual painting. And you do get the feeling of, like, just this massive crowd of Huns. But there's really not that many there that he painted. But it's just so gorgeous. Berserker. Ah, another great one, the Destroyer. Of course, I remember seeing this in one of the thinner Frazetta books that came out in the late 70s. I would check out from the library. The Egyptian Queen. And just the subtlety of this guy back here. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but you can see his face pretty well. But you can still see some of his torso, his arm, his hand on his hip. It's just so subtle. Peeking out of the shadows. Sea Witch. Not sandwich, sea witch. Let's get it right, people. Death dealers about to kick an alligator's ass. And of course, classic death dealer. The Berserker is the one that always comes to mind for me. Yeah, I hear you. That was another great comment. Death Dealer is the one that always comes to mind for me. Mongol Tyrant. Sacrifice. I wonder if she's going to pay him back in her special ways after she's rescued. And of course, the Barbarian. Mm. Oh yeah, Cat Girl. Every time I'm on a live stream with Fragaboom, you can see his Cat Girl. 
print hanging up behind him. This one was just so epic. I just love, it's like, Frank's like, where should I do the highlights? On her boobages. That's right. I said boobages. That's the highlights. North Free says the death dealer repose has been copied by every artist alive. Pretty much. Eric says my pastor at the church I grew up in was an artist and did oil paintings at the time. I used to watch him paint. Watching blurs turn into extremely detailed figures. It was so cool to see. Yeah, totally. And then the price list on things. <clears throat> and these prices are 27 years old. So just imagine how much this stuff is now. <clears throat> mm. But Tarzan the Invincible, the prelim, 65 grand on page 116. So let's see page 116. I think I might have to sneeze again. So right there, 15 by 10 by 15, 24, 27 years ago, this could have been yours for the low, low price of $65,000. Low, low price, $65,000. You could own that 27 years ago. And then you get to the oil paintings. Catwalk, 500000 Cat Girl's Family, Death Dealer's Family, Mongol Tyrant, 200000 I mean, Catwalk has got to be over a million now, I would think. Wow. Eric says the Egyptian painting sold for 5.4 million. Yeah, all these prices are probably in the millions now, I would I would expect. North Free says it's amazing talent. I love watching Alex Ross how-to videos of modern Rockwell. Yeah, Alex Ross. I love watching anybody paint. It's very relaxing to watch. Little Abner drawings, 12,700. I mean, these prices are through the roof now. I mean, just imagine if I told my wife, trust me, if we pay 500000 it's going to be a big loan. But trust me, in 20 some years, that 500000 is going to be a few million. I mean, we could have paid that loan back and still been set. Oh, Simon Bisley. Eric brought up Simon Bisley. Simon Bisley's just awesome. Well, guys, I just want to show you this Alexander Gallery Frazetta book. I'll be going through some other books later that I have on my, my bookshelf. Of course, I can't close the stream out without pimping First Man. This is the complete set. Still available. Will ship out as soon as possible which would mean if I got an order tonight, I would put it in the mail tomorrow. That is how I roll with you guys. All the books have been fulfilled for the backers. So now it just comes down to, if I get a new order, I fulfill right then. You've got the Bart Sears cover variant. You've got, of course, the standard my cover and then we've got the program book you can get all three for 75 you can get the book by itself for 25 you can get the book in the program book for i think 35 so if you haven't got first man yet go get it there's a link in the description it's in demand. I've got a sign-up page for First Man 2, Learning Curve. That's the title of the story, Learning Curve. Because now Luke Henry is back on Earth as First Man. And like anything new, 
he's got a little bit of a learning curve to go through. Oh, I can attend that all three came in great shape. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. The program book is really neat. Well, I appreciate that too. So guys, if you haven't got First Man yet, go get it. It'll go in the mail ASAP. 64 pages of fun, square bound. So it will look nice on your bookshelf. The program book is 40 pages and it's stapled and I stapled it instead of square bound. So you could undo the staples to pull out the center poster. So check it out. Thank you all for joining me. I hope everybody has a great weekend and has a great Easter. Uh, Eric says, is the mailing list active for First Man 2? Yes, it is. I've posted a link on Twitter. I've posted on Facebook with the link to it. So uh, if you need the link for the sign-up page for First Man 2 Learning Curve, uh, just go to my Facebook page or go to my Twitter and check it out. Pop Culture Avenger. Hi, Andy. Just got home from work and all, and my package from you arrived today. Fantastic. Thank you so much to everyone that has supported the project. Spread the word. Let's get it into more hands because that would be awesome. I'm going to be signing off, but I know you guys love seeing my pretty, pretty face. So there it is. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate all the support. And I will catch you guys uh, maybe over the weekend or Monday with another flip through of a classic book that I own. Until then, have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.